Welcome to the Dice Tower, a series of video reviews about board and card games. Here are your hosts. Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Z Garcia. I'm Chris Yee. I'm Mike Delicio. Today we're talking about summer camp and our enjoyable experiences we had as a child. I never went to summer camp. I gotta go. I went to summer camp and got really bad chapped lips once. <laughs> really bad. Some okay. people's lips not were really bad. Like black. They were so bad. They were, yeah, it was not a good thing. Wow, it's disgusting. Okay. I gotta go now. <laughs> I. I really enjoyed summer camp, but the, for me, summer camp was never like this. No. I never did the, I mean, we did a few things. You sat around the fire and stuff, but there was mm. never all these lakes and cabins and stuff. It was always much more sanitized than this, and for that, I'm thankful. Anyway, <laughs> let's talk about summer camp, the game. This game from Buffalo just came out in uh, Target about a month or so mm -hmm, ago, mm -hmm. and I'm always cautiously optimistic about such things. Sure. Like, hey, there's a new game out of Target that's not from Hasbro. It's hopefully good. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what we're going to talk about today. But before we do that, let's have an explanation of the game from The Voice. Welcome to Summer Camp. This is a four-player setup of the game here. The game plays two to four players. Uh, this is a deck-building game in which players are trying to move their campers along these tracks here to reach the end to get these merit badges for points, as well as the cards they purchase are points. Now, if you're, if you're not familiar with what a deck building a game is, very briefly, players will start with a certain number of cards in their hand and a deck of cards that they'll draw from. Players are going to play all of the cards that they have and then purchase some cards. There are cards here that correspond to these different tracks. So, maybe cards that allow you to move further along. These cards that you played and that you purchased will go to your discard pile, and then you'll draw up a new hand of five cards. When, it, when the turn comes back to you, you can play all of these cards out that you want, and maybe you'll even purchase a new card, and then that will get added to your discard pile as well. Once you have to draw cards, but your draw pile is empty, you'll then take your hand of your discard pile of cards, shuffle it together, and then draw up five new cards. And so your deck will slowly become stronger over the course of the game. <clears throat> now, what's happening in this game in particular is you have these campers trying to move along these three tracks. Every time that you move onto a space here that shows a little bonus icon, you'll get whatever that bonus is. And then when you are able to get all of your campers at or beyond this bridge here, you'll get the participation trophy, the most points if you do it first, six, four, or two points. You'll go ahead and add that right to your player board. And as each player moves their camper all the way to the very end of a track, uh, this here is the same type of thing, but if you move it to the end of a track, you'll grab the highest victory point merit badge in that activity. In this case, the Arts and Crafts, 12.1 goes to the yellow player. Then the next player to do it will get 10, then 8, <clears throat> then 6 points. So, on a player's turn, they'll have a hand of typically five cards, though it depends on uh, the, the order. If you're the first player, you only draw three cards at the start of the game, then four, then five, then six. Players will play all the cards that they have in their hand. You can use the action shown on them. A lot of times it's to move along a track. So in this case, I could move along on the friendship track, and so I get to move one space. Now, the other cards that you have in hand, you can either play them for their actions, or you can choose to discard them for energy. These light out cards that start in your deck, uh, you have no action you can play with them, so they have to be discarded for energy. So if I played all these, I would have these two left, so I could have, I could have two cards that I discard, and I can spend two bucks to purchase anything that shows up to a value of two. Now, you also have snack bars over here. Every player will start with one. You can spend these as one energy. So therefore, between the two cards I discarded and the one snack bar, I can now buy a card that costs three. I'm going to go ahead and do... Oh, this is in the wrong place. I'm going to go ahead and purchase this sing-along card. When you purchase a card, it then gets replaced with another card of the same activity. And then the next player will go. So over the course of the game, you're going to move your campers along, score the participation and the all-star points as you move them further along, and the first player to reach the end bridge, or to grab one of each of these three uh, end-of-track merit badges, will end the game. And once players have done that, you'll go ahead and count up points. Points are on the cards uh, that are purchasable over here, uh, and on the different badges that you'll be collecting. There are these cards over here which are always available to purchase, but they have no points on them. 
to just get a little more energy, a little more money to spend in the game, or to discard cards and draw new ones, or to be able to move on any path. Cards over here that pertain to each of the areas, so for example, this is the food, uh, the food cooking row. There are cards that will always let you move on those tracks, but then each one also has their own flavor. So this one, for example, says that you can gain two snack bars. Uh, so the food one will have big energy or the ability to grab more snack bars. This is arts and crafts over here in the middle, and so arts and crafts will allow you to do things like discard cards for new and different special, uh, special abilities. This one here is the friendship track, and this deck has a lot of cards that say things like draw two cards, all other players get to draw one, or gain three snack bars, all other players gain one. Now there are seven different themed decks that you can play with in this game, and they all come in their own boxes. Games allow you to do fun little things like interact with the other players. If you move on the games track, and then you uh, play a card that says uh, move, and if you tag someone, you also get some of the energy bars or something. The water sports one has cards that will allow you to move on any of the tracks. Outdoors has a lot of focus on being able to draw up more cards so you can have a ton of cards in hand. And the adventure pack allows you to have cards that will let you purchase and gain cards straight from, uh, straight from the piles without having to spend any of your energy and fun unique ways to get them right into your hand instead of in your discard pile, things like that. So between those themed decks uh, and, the, uh, and the player board and the fact that the, the rule book does a good job of showing what all the cards are in each of the different themed decks, you get a, a decent amount of variety from the game and that is how you play Summer Camp. So most of the time when you buy a game at, again, a mass market store, mm -hmm. like this was at Target, you don't, you get the game. This one has more than you need in this set, so it has those sure. seven different decks. What do you think about the different decks, and do they really make a difference, which ones you use? I would say, yeah, I loved it. Like, I love being able to switch them out. It reminded me, so this is designed by Phil Walker Harding which uh, also is the designer of Sushi Go Party. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I thought that Sushi Go Party was such a great elevation of Sushi Go mm -hmm. because you can switch which cards in and out that you're going to be using. This felt like that for a deck building game. And I liked what each different one brought. Yeah, It's a small thing. Right. But yes. yes, they're slightly different. Yeah, I guess I, similar to what I was going to say, is that the, the core mechanisms of the game are very simplistic. And so... It's, I think, almost necessary to have those little things to change things up a bit. I also think it will blow some people's minds. Sure. They play this game, and you're like, but you can just mix and match. And mm -hmm. it's like, wow. And you, maybe you even like one deck more than the other. Like, Sure. Oh, like I'm Z, sure you will. I'm sure Z you'll feel like, I want to. play with wanna... friendship, you no. know, but some of us do. Right. Mm -hmm. you'll, you'll like always having in whatever, you know, whichever yeah. one you like to throw in, because that's the deck you like. Yeah, right. absolutely. But they are... Not that many cards, and a big chunk of it is just sort of like move two, move three, sure. move whatever, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then a few cards that change around that. Thematically tied, like you said, and I do like that idea. I also like thematically that you can just be like, this one's games. Right. I want to play with games at, mm -hmm. at summer camp. I like that. And it also fits the theme to an extent too, right? Because the idea of summer camp is you go and you try different activities. You try different stuff. It's like, oh, today I'm going to do archery. Tomorrow I'm going to do, you know, yeah. whatever it might be. So I think that's a nice little touch too. Do you feel like this is, I felt that this is a prime welcoming game. Like mm -hmm. if I have someone over and they've not played many games before, mm -hmm. this is one I'm going to show them. 100%. Yes, yeah. it is. There, now, I, I, I have something that I was going to talk about a little bit later that this is it's a... It's later. Okay, well, let's talk about it right now. My thought on okay, this... Okay, thank you. When I, first, <laughs> when I played it first was like, this is an introductory deck-building racing game, correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, there's another one out there that's Which well one? known. An, an introductory deck building race game. Yes. Or you think of Quest for Eldorado? I'm thinking of Quest for Eldorado. And I'm going to say that's not nearly li as light as this is. I am going to 100% agree with Z, even though I hate myself for doing so. <laughs> How? Agreed. Okay. So, but I think they're both welcoming games. No, I, I do really not. do. El Dorado, I, well, as much as I like it, mm -hmm. there's a confusion about you can only take these cards and you have to pick one of these decks that now mm -hmm. comes into play. Someone who's never played before is like, ah, there's different types of terrain. Mm -hmm. You have to chain things together. This is so much easier. It's I'm not, not gonna... that it's that difficult, mm -hmm. but 
there is there are a few extra concepts. This one is streamlined to such an accessible point. Uh, okay, I would, I'm not going to argue that this is not lighter. It is lighter, but I think the order of magnitude. I think you guys are are a little off on it. I okay. don't think it's that much. Well, let me ask this then. Mm -hmm. um, this is a we all we are all saying it's a fairly light game. I mean, easy it, to teach people. Very, very much. Light. Very what much. about us? Mm -hmm. We're all gamers. We play a ton sure. of games. Where do you stand on that? Or is it, is it too light for you? Would you only play this with people who are new to gaming or want to play a light game? It doesn't have to be new to gaming. Or mm -hmm. would you play this on your own? Like we're sitting here and Z's like, hey, let's play summer camp. Am I answering that? I, you, you oh, answer I'm asking it first. everyone. I will answer, but you answer it first. I like it. It's light. Mm -hmm. I will probably prioritize it with folks that really enjoy light games over folks that do not. I do think that uh, there are plenty of people out there who will think, gamers, who will think this floats away. Mm -hmm. There isn't enough here for me to do. This game plays itself, yada, yada. And I even might agree with some of those things. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of the purchasing moments in the game in which you spend cards and your little energy bars to buy new cards and grow your deck, you buy the best thing you can get. Unless you're falling behind on one of the tracks that right. you buy from there. Sure. They're pretty straightforward, kind of obvious things. But they are dynamic. They are engaging. And mm -hmm. I do enjoy just playing it. I yeah. do. I mean, I'm not... I also am a light gamer, mm -hmm. usually. So... Yeah. But I could see heavier gamers, like you're, you're a heavier gamer and you're a heavier gamer than mm. I am too. I, I could see you guys maybe not going to this one first. Like you're saying, you well, like I'm the other one that. better. That's what I'm yeah, asking. Yeah, no, I, I would, I'll just come out and say it. I would, for myself and most game groups I play with, I would go with Eldorado over this because right. it's a little bit more, but not much. And I also, I, I, I mean, I do like some heavy games, but, uh, you know, I, I also like having a kind of a light, breezy game to me. This is a little too much on that light end. I think it's okay. just okay. a little bit too okay. much. See, I find that this it's really engaging to me, right? I love deck building games where the choice of what to buy is not painfully obvious. I find mm -hmm. that many that have a, a rotating lineup of cards, you say, well, I have X number of money. That one cost X. I will buy it. This one has those three different tracks, and so you have to think a mm. little bit about balancing that, but also this card sounds really fun. Mm -hmm. Do I buy the card that sounds really fun, or maybe a more uh, utilitarian choice, and also has the three cards on the side that you can always purchase from, mm -hmm. so you're never completely a hose. I think that this does a signature Phil Walker Harding thing, where it's it's light enough that it almost could float away, but you have a few meaningful choices each turn. So I would pull it out on my own just for fun. I would introduce this to people who haven't played this particular game. Oh, you like deck building games. Here's one that's really breezy. We can play it super quick. I like it because it's incredibly straightforward. Mm -hmm. You are building a deck to move three people straight down the, the line. Sure. That's yep. it. And that's why, I mean, to me, I'd way play this over El Dorado, and I wouldn't have even thought of El Dorado. You brought it up. Really? Um, oh, no, I think there's a I think this con is... Concert. Well, but El Dorado, I have to explain terrain and this and that. Here, I'm like, do this, do this. You cross the bridge, get this, do this. It's really straightforward. And also, this theme is incredibly accessible because lots of people, they've either gone to summer camp sure. or they've watched a lot of movies about it. Yeah, they you get know? it. Everybody yes. gets it. Yeah. It's a theme that's also very hardly in board gaming at all. Yeah. You no, know, about going yeah. to summer camp. I've, and it's the ni it's the nice part. You're not getting bullied in this game. It's thrown <laughs> there into the river. There's no people of hockey masks either. There's mm. one deck, which is like the confrontational one. I mm. forget what it is. There's a couple of cards in there that can, you can be mean a, yeah, little, yeah, bit. a little bit. Yeah, take, but it's also a very... Bar, steal one from every player. Yeah, that it's type generally of a very friendly game, too. A friendly design. I would agree that in addition to it being an easy to teach and learn game, the theme is welcoming, the art is lovely, the components are very nice, I think, especially for the price point and the fact that this is at a mass market, at least to begin with, a uh, location where you can purchase it. I think it does a lot of things very, very well. My only complaint component-wise is the cards, Yeah. which often yeah, would great. be a deal breaker for me, but also, uh, at least when we've seen this available at Target, it's very affordable, mm -hmm. so I feel like I'm not going to play this game to the point where the cards will fall apart, right. but I will pull it out often, and mm. so I'm okay with the cards. I've also noticed some of the cards, even within the same deck, have a different hue to the back of it, mm. so there's a few little issues that you could nitpick, 
but I have enough fun that I, you know, with this that I, I, I'm okay letting those slide. My issue with the cards is not actually what you said, where they're not great quality. They have a weird finish. They do have an odd finish to them. Yeah, they're Maybe like a rubbery, the slightly mm -hmm. rubbery finish. And it's, it gets better if you play with the cards a lot, actually. It gets oh, rid of some of that. It sort of, bit yeah, of it yeah. eases up a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, so that it isn't quite a self sort of uh, eliminating problem. They still feel a little weird and kind of a little too tacky. But out of the box, you might hate the way the cards feel. You're going to have to shuffle those up and kind of break them up and move mm -hmm. them around and all that. I don't know if you noticed to that. Uh, the I didn't actually little... open it up and everything. You guys yeah, were doing yeah, that. Yeah, but I it. felt that I'm just, my fingers want to feel a linen finish or nothing. Sure. You know? <laughs> sure, I'm yeah. okay with a smooth card finish, but that slightly rubberized vibe, I really hate cards like that. Yeah, These I, are leaning that way. I don't love it, but I, I'm kind of comparing this to other mass market type games and I feel like it's pretty commensurate with those and in some cases even nicer components even nicer than your the cardboard the tokens are yeah. lovely sure. you know the, the fact that the boxes hold the right. decks the nice tuck boxes lovely. I don't think I've ever seen tuck boxes in a mass market game that's before. beautiful sure. yeah 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 all right, Mike, what's your final thoughts and rating? My final thoughts are, like, I think it's a very good welcoming game. I did kind of bring up the points that I do feel like this does have a very obvious competitor out there that I would probably choose to play instead of this. That being said, I still am giving this a 7. I still think it is something that for people that are intrigued by the theme, like the art, want a light, breezy game, or if you're introducing somebody to deck building, I think this is a great, you mentioned Sushi Go, that's a great introduction to drafting. It's a great introduction to deck building. Um, maybe a little lighter than I would prefer. Yeah, I actually, I'm going to give it the same rating as 7, although I disagree with everything else Mike said. <laughs> um, I don't want to play, if I have my druthers, I'm playing a game with full-size cards instead of hobbit-size cards. Um, but I like this. It's not one I would pick to play for myself. I don't think I would ever pick this because I want to play it, but I would definitely have this on the shelf and someone says, hey, you know, what's that? Right. I'd be like, oh, it's a deck-building game. In fact, this could be... The game I use to introduce people to deck building game. Right. You know, I've been using Dominion, or you know, but I would rather use this. It's a lot easier. Yeah. There's mm -hmm. no weird cases for this. I wouldn't overplay this one. I think I play it. We're like, good. Now what else? Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, it's not like d d for me that when I did play Dominion, it was like, let's play it again. Let's play it again. Let's right. play it again. Sure. Here I was very content. I thought the game lasted the perfect amount of time. This is a good Christmas gift in my sure. mind. Don't be surprised if it shows up on our Christmas. You know, shopping guy later right, this year, right, who right. knows? Mm -hmm. But so for me, seven. What about you? I agree with most everything you're saying, except for me, this is kind of where I'm at, so you guys understand. I would play this with people that don't care about what deck building means. <laughs> okay? Right. That's where I'm at. Well, no, I get I'm that. Not, I'm not there to introduce them to deck building. I want to play a fun game with them, and they're not really into games that much, or they haven't experienced that many. 8 out of 10 from me because it's that kind of game. Mm -hmm. It is mass market price with elements of hobby game ideas and sort of trappings and little boxes that hold the cards and cute things and a little race and yes, deck building, but who cares? It's a fun game. It's a card game. Mm-hmm. So I don't, again, we can't sort of keep coming back to like talking about it as a deck building game. It's a kind of a light deck building game, a heavy one. It's a card game that just about anybody will get. And it's so easy to understand and it's so welcoming. Um, and the theme, who can have objections to that? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That's where I'm at. Did I mention the chap lip, Z? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Chris. I'm giving it an eight, yeah. <laughs> I'm giving this game a nine. I really love it. It is, Whoa, it's really? one of my favorite deck building games now. Uh, it's one of my favorite card games, I guess mm. I could even say, Z, because don't I say just... Deck don't say deck builder, Chris. <laughs> yeah. I gotta say. <laughs> <laughs> I just have so much fun with it. It is yeah. a game that I could see in a year. Maybe that rating will calm down, but I'm excited to have another game group, and I'm going to pull this one out. And it can be with experienced people. It can be with inexperienced people. It's just going to be fun no matter what, and so... Uh, I, and I love mixing up the decks and seeing what's going to what's going to pop out. I love the combos. We haven't really talked about that. When you move up the tracks, or you get a free movement on another track, which I'll move on this one mm -hmm. to get a free energy bar, which lets me buy a bigger card. Like absolutely, there's a lot of fun little combos that all fall in line, and it's smooth. 
Yeah. And it's a great time. There's a nice rise and fall to like making it to the bridges also. Mm -hmm. Like everybody's just racing to get to the first bridge. And so you have this like, uh, oh, you got there first. Okay. And yeah. then you do it again for the second set of bridges. Mm -hmm. So I cadence of like, boom, I beat you there by one turn. Mm -hmm. I get yeah. the bigger uh, badge, you know, right. the more points. I like that cadence also. There's a lot going on here that is, it's nice, but so easy to get. Mm -hmm. So yep. easy to internalize. Well, there you go. Here's the quote for you, better than summer camp. Better than like summer camp. actual summer camp. Oh, oh, oh that was yeah. a confusing quote, and we shan't <laughs> use it. Summer camp. Better than summer camp. Tom Vassell. <laughs> All right. Until next time, I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Zeke Garcia. I'm Chris Yee. I'm Mike Felicio. Have fun roasting marshmallows Ooh. with chap lips.